lisani yafqahu qawli wa the principal professor mushtaq ahmed lon sa our chief guests and expert sahab and professor ravi ranjan sahab esteemed keynote speaker dr hashim iqbal sahab senior faculty members dear colleagues delegates students assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh a very and very warm welcome and good morning to all of you it is indeed a privilege for all of us that we have with us some of the top resource persons and academicians with us and i'm sure that once we leave this auditorium we will all be intellectually rich and would contribute to the society and to higher education in the best possible way before we begin the proceedings let us hear the college tarana Hey 
you very much. History, they say, is cruel to some and kind to some other people. But we must not forget that history is not and is never objective. It is subjective and whenever subjectivity comes in our ideology, there are biases, there are people who are made heroes and there are people who are made villains. That is why we need to keep Friedrich Nietzsche in mind that in reality there are no truths. There are only perspectives and there are only interpretations. That is why we all remember Mahatma Gandhi ji but only few of us are aware of the old Lady Gandhi, Matangini Hazra. We may all be aware of literary figures like Kamala Das, but who among us knows a revolutionary, a social activist, a freedom fighter like Kamala Devi? Similarly, we may all be knowing that Tagore is one of the greatest poets and dramatists that India has ever produced. But who among us knows that Girish Karnad regards him as a second-rate dramatist? It is in this perspective that we have assembled here and discuss our past and we must always we do experience this that whenever we visit history we feel forced to affirm and assert that we need to revisit history we need to alter history that is why in different regimes during different regimes you will find people interpreting misinterpreting are giving us a newer and innovative perspectives of those ideas which for us was once or were once gospel truths. Since we have experts here to discuss all these, that is why we must be very positive and hope that we will learn something new from our experts. Before we begin the proceedings, I request our worthy principal, with those whose support such programs are next to impossible, I request him to kindly take the seat on the days. Professor Mushtaq Ahmad Omsa. Thank you very much, sir. I am quite happy and privileged to request our resource person, Professor Manindra Nath Thakur Sahib, to kindly join Principal Sahib. Thank you very much, sir. I also request our next resource person, Professor Ravi Ranjan Sahib, to kindly take the seat on the days. I would also like our esteemed keynote speaker, Professor Hashim Bal Saab, to kindly take the seat on the desk. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. To inaugurate this event, we'll have a welcome address by none other than worthy principal, Professor Mushtaq Amal Lohan Saab. I request him to come over here and deliver the welcome address and formally welcome the guests and delegates. Professor Mushtaq Amal Lohan Esteemed resource persons from the for the seminar, Professor Manindranath Thakur, 
and Professor Ravi Ranjan Sahib, Keynote Speaker Dr. Hashim Iqbal Malik Sahib, Faculty Members, Participants from different universities and colleges, and dear students, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good morning to all of you. It is indeed a moment of pride and pleasure for our institution to welcome you all, especially the resource persons and the keynote speaker to this one day national seminar on forgotten heroes, stories of unsung heroes, freedom fighters. I hope and believe that we all shall get intellectually richer by the end of this seminar and that is the motto of such seminars. It is an open secret that in today's fast moving world we hardly find time for remembrance of our rich heritage and past. This becomes all the more crucial whilst the nation celebrates Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, commemoration of 75 years of Indian independence. The fight against colonial rule in India constitutes a unique narrative, one which is not marred by violence, rather a narrative that is full of variegated stories of valor bravery, satyagra, dedication and sacrifice across the length and breadth of the subcontinent. These stories compose the rich Indian cultural heritage and traditions. Thus, the unsung heroes need not necessarily define the lesser known freedom fighters. They may at times be the leaders whose ideals delineate the Indian value system. This seminar on unsung heroes is an attempt to recall and remember forgotten heroes of our freedom struggle, many of whom might be renowned yet unknown to the new generation. They have given up their life and their happiness in the hopes of a brighter tomorrow. Bursa Munda, Kamala Das, Kamala Devi, Chattopadhyaya, Khudiram, Bose and others are among the faces. Their contributions must be valued in the same manner that we value the contributions of well-known freedom fighters. With these popular faces, we have somehow forgotten the faces of those who have contributed to the freedom struggle. Now it is time to pay tribute to these faces. The aim of recreating and bringing forth their stories which lay as faded memories of the past shall serve as a medium of inspiration and encouragement for the coming generations. India 2.0 is not just about fueling the spirit of India in any one particular paradigm of growth. It encompasses all spheres of life, most of all by enriching our hearts and souls. The spirit of India is incomplete whilst we take our unsung heroes along this journey of growth and development. Their ethos and principles are to be recalled and respected. With these words, I throw this seminar open and wish the organizers and participants all the very best. Thank you very much. Speaker Sahar, we will wish to like to present the mementos and shawl to our guests. For that, I request Ajal Sahib to kindly come here. Thank you very much. Now that we all know that the theme of the seminar is Forgotten Heroes, 
stories of unsung heroes and freedom fighters. History, as I already told you, is written from a perspective. And usually, it is the will of power, which Friedrich Nietzsche has said, that drives the nations, the powerful, to write and rewrite history. That is why we need to look into history every time and try to find those people who, despite being the quote-unquote heroes, have been relegated to the margins. So this is the fight of the margins against the center. But I somehow believe that while we center the margins, sometimes margins become so powerful that they themselves become center and relegate the rest to the margins. So this fight of centering and margining, heroing and unheroing, reading and rereading will never end. And we need to take it in a right spirit to learn from history rather than repeating the blunders of history. Now, I would like to invite our keynote speaker, Dr. Hashim Iqbal Sahab, for the keynote address. But before that, I will introduce him to the participants and audience here. Dr. Hashim Iqbal Sahab is working as an assistant professor and is head department of history at Government Degree College, Tral. He has worked as a research officer at National Institute of Administrative Research, Missouri. He has done his doctorate from Kashmir University, Srinagar in the year 2007 and has a number of publications to his credit. There are some major projects in which he has worked among them our baseline social assessment study of elementary education of Gujar Bakarwal and Gali community in Jammu and Kashmir. There is another research project on baseline social assessment study of elementary education of 14 districts in Jammu and Kashmir. Another research project on which he has worked is effectiveness of CRCs and BRCs in elementary education. He has also done, a work, done work on state on good governance conducted by National Institute of Administrative Research. If I keep on enumerating his achievements and publications, then I have to take at least an hour to enumerate his achievements. Without wasting much of the time, since we are already running short of the schedule, I humbly request Dr. Hashim Iqbal Saab for the keynote address. Dr. Hashim Iqbal Saab. Thank you. Uh, respected uh, Principal Sir, Professor Mushtaq Ahmed Lone, Sahab, uh, Professor Manindra Sir, and uh, Professor Ravi Ranjan, and other faculty members of the college, and their students, uh, Good morning to all of you and assalamu alaikum. So, uh, as you know that, first of all, I would like to congratulate the Degree College Dar for organizing a one-day seminar on this uh, theme, the stories of unsung heroes, the freedom struggle of India. It's a very wonderful topic and has been one of the theme of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. And uh, uh, credit goes to the Degree College Tral for organizing this event and I am also thankful that uh, they have uh, found me worth and have invited me as a keynote speaker for this event. Now uh, before I uh, start uh, the keynote address I would like to tell you that why we need uh, freedom fighters and uh, revolutionaries for that matter. What actually happened in human civilizations? As a student of history, you know that I, as a student of history, when I study these things, I uh, recollect that during the phase when Supians were simply hunter-gatherers, they don't have any concept of property, or they don't, uh, they were simply living for the day, um, wandering from one place to another place in search of food, in search of shelter. But you know that uh, when the agricultural revolution took place some uh, 5,000, 6,000 years, because in history we don't have the exact dates, we can simply, for the sake of understanding, 
when the agricultural revolution took place with the agricultural revolution the concept of property also took place because you know that when uh, uh, the humans were at the stage of when uh, at the stage of hunter gatherers they were not at the top of the food chain when they started mastering over other animals when they start uh, keeping the pets domesticating certain animals and all of a sudden it came at the top of the food chain and with the coming of agricultural revolution the concept of property arises when the concept of property was there it was also the con conflict emerged when the conflict emerged that means that society got fragmented into two groups one who started exploiting the resources and another who started struggling for the capture of resources so uh, you know that uh, agricultural in every uh, early society is used to be the backbone of economy and the major invasions and wars were fought to capture the resources you know that the as we study the history we find that the aryans came to india in search of fresh pastures and finally uh, they settled in india or for that matter early invaders like the persians were the first people who invaded india they were knowing that india is rich in agriculture it was known as it was considered to be the golden sparrow so in search of resources they came to india then it was followed by the series of invasions why they selected india because i know that the, you know that agriculture was in abundance because of its resources and the invaders particularly came from the central asian regions uh, they were landlocked barren no scope for agriculture in order to feed their countries in order to feed their homeland the only uh, thing left with them was to search for the resources and in this context uh, they were time and again invading india beat uh, uh, the persians who first came to india followed by alexander's invasion then the series of invasion you find parthians scythians kushans huns then followed by the turkish invasion of india uh, because uh, they also were looking for the rich uh, rich lurials the rich resources of india and uh, uh, particularly uh, you know, so there might be reservations some some might be thinking that because of when islam emerged as a new religion to spread the message of islam that could be the motive of them but in reality if we study the history properly it was the economy of india resources of india which tantalized those invaders come to invade india to capture the resources of india certain exceptions may be there but i as a student of history when i study it i found that it were the rich resources of india which tantalized those uh people the turks beat uh, then later on you will find the mongols now uh when these people came they were in search of resources and then you know that uh, after the industrial revolution two major things have happened in human history one i said was an agricultural revolution which uh, f uh, through which the concept of property emerged and then no, the second was the industrial revolution which took place in europe in around 1750 and uh, spread to the other parts of the world uh, other parts of europe and uh, after the coming of industrial revolution those europeans were trying to find out the new colonies where from they could get the raw material to feed their industries and to find out the markets where they could sell their goods and uh, they were in search of different colonies and the different colonial powers went to the different parts of world africa even america was accidentally discovered and uh, for that matter the different companies established their um, these uh, uh, they established their uh, companies on the different coastal regions of the india in terms of you uh, in terms of britain it was the east india company then afterwards they start slowly steadily intervening into the political affairs of india and finally entire india was uh, became the colony of the britain 
Now, when India became the colony of Britain, there were certain, I am not, because there are thousands of thousands of revolutionaries who have fought uh, for their motherland, maybe not for the idea of India, they were having the local concerns, local grievances, because uh, we have the Santhal movement, we have the um, this Pindari movement and other local regional movements, they might not be having the idea that we are actually fighting for the countries because they were fighting for the local issues. But uh, when the Britishers uh, full-fledgedly established their power in India, with that, the good thing happened was the modern education was introduced in India. And it was because of this modern uh, education and uh, the certain uh, lofty ideas given by certain reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Rai and other, uh, a new sort of awakening. It was known as Indian Renaissance because in Renaissance which took place in Europe in early 14th century, later on in Indian context we say that after coming of those reformers, a renaissance, a new awakening uh, emerged among the Indians, particularly among the educated class, which is uh, where, where they got an idea of nationalism, idea of national, uh, idea of uh, uh, protecting their culture, protecting their values, civilizational uh, patterns. So these ideas got inculcated after uh, the, uh, the modern education spread to India. Now uh, the, um, the speaker was telling us that history is very cruel. In fact, history, there is a subjectivity which is very natural in history because uh, ultimately we have to rely on the facts and uh, we have to rely on the writer because we say that in order to study history, one should study the historian first because I as a writer may be inclined towards any particular religious ideology, towards any particular political ideology, so that will reflect when I write something and my own personal likings and dislikings may impact uh, the course of my writings. So this is uh, something which is very natural. Now what happened, I as a student of history when I have observed that uh, uh, the majority of uh, the major uh, revolutionaries or the major political leaders who, who got recognition in Indian freedom struggle, they were mainly very close to the corridors of power, be it because they had been very close to the Britishers, that's why they got recognition. Because the place for your recognition is very important in history. Because if somebody says something in Delhi, that will be heard. If somebody says something in Thrall, that would be heard so easily. Because the place and timing and your connections with the corridors of power is very important for your recognition. That's why I said if somebody says something in Delhi may be uh, recognized easily, may be heard easily as compared to a person who speaks something in trial. So those heroes, they got recognition because they have been put into the writing by different historians, by different um, travelers who traveled India and have written about them. But there have been thousands, even the principal sir named a few, uh, uh, who are the unsung heroes, but to my understanding there has been the thousands and thousands of unsung heroes who uh, lived in countryside, who hardly had, uh, who hardly had been recognized by, uh, by the regimes which were prevalent. And you know that the freedom struggle of India has been a very long struggle. It does not start uh, somewhere around um, uh, late 20th century. You know that the revolt of 1857 has been considered, many historians consider it as the first, uh, the first revolt for Indian freedom. Some called it Sipai Mutiny and there were thousands of uh, revolutionaries who participated in that revolt of 1857. But ultimately Britishers were successful in curbing that revolt and uh, then afterwards you will find the different phases of Indian freedom struggle in which different uh, revolutionaries, political leaders participated in the freedom struggle of India 
and ultimately India achieved freedom. So the aim of this workshop is to recognize, is to, uh, is to pay tribute to all those people who have not been recognized by history but who had valiantly fought for the freedom struggle of India. No, you know, when I say the timing and place, that is very important because in history we, we have witnessed these things. You know, for example, I'll tell you the example, Tendulkar is Tendulkar because he has played in Shivaji Park at Mumbai. Had he been playing it at Thrall, there were marginal uh, possibilities that he might have rose to that occasion which we have present. You know that the first May is celebrated across the world as a Labor Day. Why it is celebrated as a Labor Day? Because somewhere in 1886, uh, there were the protests in Haymarket, Chicago, where they demanded, uh, demanded uh, certain concessions for the laborers. But you might be surprised to know that in 1865, the labor revolt, the labor agitation, or you can say the first trade union happened to be in Srinagar when the Shalbaf workers protested in the lanes of Srinagar against the high taxation in 1865 and around 28 workers died. To my understanding, I as a student of history consider it as the first labor revolt on earth. But this has hardly been recognized. So we celebrate first May as a Labor Day because of that Chicago event, but hardly anybody recognizes what happened to the, in the lanes of Srinagar when those uh, Shalwaps waivers were uh, raising their voices against the heavy taxation. So the place and the connection of the person with the corridors of power is very important. Because throughout the history you will find that a person from an urban center, which is a, a vastly urban center, has a more recognition. And in Indian context, the, uh, the caste has also played a very important role. If we analyze the religions, you will find majority of the avatars or prophets have been from the upper caste. It is a true of the Hinduism, it is a true of Islam and Christianity. Because they have the recognition. The person from high cost, person from urban center, they have a say, they have, they have the audience. That's why they are recognized. And for the freedom struggle of India, those who participated in, in um, far-flung areas, countrysides, they have not been recognized fully uh, by history. And this is a time to pay tribute to all those revolutionaries who have fought for the freedom struggle of India. And I have been told that uh, since we have already wasted a lot of time early in the morning because of the winters. So with these words, I thank you again, the GDC Thrall for inviting us for this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hashim Balsav, for this thought-provoking keynote address. Again, the question arises of who is kept on the margins and who at the center. To learn more about it without wasting much of the time, we will like to call upon here the first speaker and he is none other than Professor Mindindana Thakur. And again, I would like to first introduce Professor Mindindana Thakur to all of you. Dr. Mindindana Thakur teaches at the Center of Political Science, Jawaharlal Nehru University. He has done his PhD at Delhi University and his PhD was on religion and Marxism. He has worked on a London school of school supported project on conflict and institutional change in India in which Kashmir was a major component. He has worked at a joint director of Developing Countries Research Center, Delhi University. He has also received Nehru Memorial and Muslim Fellowship to work on new religious movements. His books include Gyan Ki Rajniti, Wounded History, Religion, Conflict, Psyche and Social Healing. 
and democracy on move his forthcoming book is on indian intellectual traditions recollections and reflections he is currently working on political ideas in indian national movement and gandhi's ethical realism he is one of the founders of creative theory movement which aimed at changing the terms of discourse in social science to decolonizing it given sar's i catching phrases and titles of the books i am damn sure that this session is going to be very much interesting and thought provoking without wasting much of the time i quite proudly request dr manindra saab to kindly come over here and begin his speech professor manindra now thank you thank you very much for inviting me to this conference <coughs> a respected uh, principal sahab mustafa ahmed sahab uh, mr hasim sahab dear ravi ranjan who is also a friend of mine and friends around introduction to a person in a conference i never like it you know why it looks like you are saying bab mulaviza hosiar badsha padhar rahe hain kind of thing <laughs> so <laughs> forget about the introduction let us talk something interesting and i will first begin by thanking uh, the college to uh, inviting me you know i have been to kashmir earlier also as you know that i have done some projects here but most of the time i met the elite intellectuals in kashmir or of kashmir i want to go deeper in society that i think kashmir is a place of great intellectual history and the knowledge lies in the bottom of the sea not on the top of it so i think this is an opportunity for me to interact with people around and i wish i could have stayed in tral itself to engage with younger minds and younger minds really attract me because they are more creative young generation is more intelligent indian young, young generation is very intelligent i must confess that and now we are seeing in our families also the parents who are looking towards children to teach them how to operate on computer and mobile <laughs> so things have changed so uh, i get most of my ideas from young friends uh, whom you call students so i think this is a great opportunity that uh, brought me here and i would like to hear your mind what you have the kind of questions you have to ask me after a brief introduction of the ideas that i am trying to discuss uh let me begin with a story who are the forgotten heroes who could not be documented in the <coughs> books of history we are trying to some document some of them we are running a kind of program on oral history today and we are documenting very unknown people from villages from remote <coughs> areas who have contributed to freedom struggle a team of professors in jain you are involved in that people preserve those histories intellectuals don't as you rightly said that intellectuals also have certain alienation with uh, alignment with the power people don't have that so they preserve in the stories in narratives in songs that is what we are trying to discover and that is where we need to go so let me share a couple of stories with you one it has been documented by a novelist in hindi very famous novelist called uh um fanishwar nath renu i don't know if you are aware of his writings but he is one of the best novelists in hindi literature there is a man in the there is a character in this novel he is called vaman das baban das his height is 5 feet 3 inches so a small height a man but a gandhian and a hardcore gandhian and who 
fights against the British, against the ideas of the colonialism, against idea of humiliation and <coughs> domination at a bottom level in a village. And then freedom arrives. So what happens in the village that is documented in the novel when the freedom arrives. And Maman Das is moving around, seeing towards actions being taken so that freedom is preserved. His great concern was that it is the duty of people to protect the freedom that we have got, which is the duty of ours also, to protect the freedom that we have got. Ruling classes may not be interested in protecting the freedom. They are interested in ruling the country, controlling the population. That's their phrase. People are interested in protecting their freedom that they have got. So Bhavan Das was also interested in protecting that freedom that he has got. And one night he found that bullock carts were coming from somewhere, the newly created Pakistan to India, and something was being smuggled, which was prohibited. And he stopped the bullock carts and said that you cannot smuggle, this will damage the economy of this region. Was a Gandhian, so he didn't have any arms to fight. Very small man, had no power, no physical power also to fight, but he was having the courage to stop. The bullock carts were stopped, police came, he fought with the police, he said, no, you cannot do this. I will sit on Dharna Ansan, as Gandhi used to do, and he had a lot of followings around, so police feared that people will, by, by the morning, people will come there. Then he took him to the Thana and then he discovered that those who were involved in this process were all local political leaders. So he was first time surprised by seeing that the leaders whom we gave the responsibility of protecting our freedom are actually damaging our freedom. So he was totally surprised and he was sitting on that. I said, tomorrow morning I will mobilize people. But then at night the tragedy happened and the man was killed. The man was killed but could not be erased from the pages of history because his Gandhi and Jhola that he used to have was hanged on a tree. And by the morning people came to know that Vaman Das is killed. He has died. And so people started coming there in big number. And in symbolic respect to Vaman Das, they started putting a piece of cloth on the tree. The tree still exists. That has become a highway. That tree is now on the highway. And every truck, every car crossing by that road tries to salute this Person. And many of them try to stop and put a piece of cloth on that place. And it is called now, the place is called now Chetharia Peel. Chetri. Chetri is the torn clothes. That's called Chetri in Hindi, a local language actually. So he's a Chetharia Peel now. So this is how people remember their protectors of freedom. And that has been erased from the books of history but, not, but from not from the memory of the history remember that that memory we have to recollect that memory now we have to transcribe into literary texts or into history books if you want to like it maybe the ruling class will not like it maybe such history such history they are not interested in reclaiming let me share another story i do not know how many of you know about kumar singh Kumar Singh was a big freedom fighter in 1857 in Bihar, part of Bihar, fighting against the British. Around 80 years old man, 85, 85 years old man, picked up the sword, started fighting against the British. And at one stage, his arm was wounded and he cut his arm and put in the river. At the age of 85, he was doing it. But this courage of Kumar Singh came from where? That is the story that I want to tell you. 
This courage of Kumar Singh came from a Tawaif, Dharma Bibi. She was very famous Dharma Bibi in local area. Not documented in the text of history. Dharma Bibi, when Kumar Singh was asked to give, to, to force his riaya to give revenue, Kumar Singh said, I can't collect revenue from riaya who does not have any fossil this time. How can I do that? The government said that you have to do it. You do whatever you like, but you have to collect that. He said, I will not do this. So government said that then you will have to sell off your entire, entire Jamindari. So Dharma Bibi came forward and sold all her gold to pay on behalf of the Riyaya to the government. But that history is not documented in the textbook. We caught it by narratives that we collected. I have tears in my eyes when I talk about Dharma Bibi. What could have been the kind of contribution that they made to Indian freedom struggle? So these are the forgotten heroes that we have to collect. We have to collect them. Our writers, our poets, our small time poets in the villages singing around with Iktara, the bowels of Bengal, they were carrying the message of freedom. And Gandhi was aware of this idea that the message of freedom will be brought, taken to the villages not by this English-speaking elites coming from Oxford and Cambridge and get becoming my disciple. The message will be taken to the villages by these small people. So he, he had a capacity to clone people. His idea, install his own ideas to smaller people, younger people and people in the remote areas. How did he do that? I remember I met a very famous writer called Mulkaraz Anand. I don't know if you have heard his name. So I asked him, Algodi days, yes. So I asked him that, why don't you write in Hindi? Why have you started writing in English? He said, you know, I met, no, Algodi days are Narayan, Kuli, Kuli, Kuli. So he said, I met Gandhi and told him that, look, Hindi is not my natural language, so I can't write very well in Hindi, I can write in English. Gandhi said, English, Hindi, Persian, Urdu, whatever language you know, Please start writing stories and novels and poetry. That is how our ideas will go there. So our freedom fighters are actually those poets, those writers, those, those singers who carry those songs to <coughs> common villages. We have to recollect those histo histories. And those histories are not in the archives, remember. What is an archive? Most of the historians, sorry to say this to historians who believe in writing history on the basis of documents from archive. What is an archive? Archive is a document of the ruling power, the state power. So most of the files prepared by British government are located in the archive. So this is one kind of history. This is not people's history. People's history is in their memory. Remember subaltern studies writes about Gandhi in a village, tries to understand how Gandhi was being perceived. So a villager lady told him that we thought Gandhi was a Mahatma who would touch the head of a child who is not well and the child will become all right. That is the new history, subaltern history that they wanted to create. I think that is what we have to locate. We have to re-narrate those histories, connect them together to see what is the idea of freedom that we have today. Our idea of freedom is very important. You know, I met a professor in, in Copenhagen. He was from Australia. There was a big conference. He came to me, he started talking to me. He said that my coming to this Copenhagen conference has become successful just because I have met you. I said, what is there in me? I have, I have no knowledge. He said, no, no, because you are from India. I said, why? He said, the meaning of freedom is understood by Indians only because they have fought for it. They have developed a sense of freedom. I think that meaning of freedom we have to transmit to the world. Sometime back, some a team came from Sweden and the team said that, well, India is going to become superpower. I said, what? Why should India become a superpower? We have nothing to export. What shall we give to the world? You know what he said? He said, you have ideas to give to the world. 
you have imagination to give to the world. What is that imagination that we can give to the world? Today, the greatest crisis of the world is that the world is running out of imagination. That is his statement, not my imagination. My statement. He said that world is running out of colors. World is running out of imagination. And India has that imagination. Imagination of freedom that you have. People don't have that. Lot of ideas that you have produced in the past. And that is what I, what I call, why do we want to go back to history? History is very bloody. We have been fighting against each other all the time. Isn't it? You find out history of two communities, any two communities in India. You have, you have an ugly history there. But in that ugly history, there is something very beautiful. That beautiful is the idea that we produced during that struggle. That idea we need to capture today. Because the world needs that idea today. Not only we, not only you. The entire humanity needs that idea today. Humanity is running out of ideas. Some, I call it end of time. There's a big philosopher called Zizek. This is his phrase. What is the end of time? The modernity started with Renaissance and Reformation in Europe. So it was the beginning of a new time with new ideas, new concepts, new categories. We started looking at the world with new ideas, new concepts and new categories. The, those ideas, concepts and categories have reached to their limit now. Now if we don't bring new ideas, survival of humanity will be difficult. And I'm not saying this. You must, have, you must be knowing somebody called Stephen Hawking. He went to space. So people ask, Yaar, tum already parashan ho itna physics ko leke apna. Space mein jaake kyon time barbaad kar apna energy bhi kar khatam kar rahe ho. He said, I want to go to the space to see how the world will live after 100 years. Because if there is no innovation in ideas, if they do not know how to resolve their conflict, then humanity will be in danger. Because humanity has developed in last 400 years huge amount of instruments of mass destruction. And we can see in the new war going on how much instruments humanity has developed to kill each other. We can kill each other by remaining our room. We can also kill each other by spreading virus. We have already seen that. We are not sure whether it was naturally spread or artificially spread. War is, was, was it a biological warfare? I am not sure about that. But it is possible now that I, in my room, innovate a virus, spread in thrall, and people start falling ill. And we do not know what is the treatment of that. No matter how much vaccines we have taken, we are falling ill. And there is a big debate going on that vaccine itself was a big racket. People have earned a lot of money by vaccination. So this is what is happening to humanity. So what do we need to spread today to the world is love, affection, emotion. These are the words they were expunged from Dictionary of Social Science. A political scientist does not talk about emotion, does not talk about love, affection. And that is a tragedy that has happened globally speaking. So probably we need to go back to our history to find out those lights that we produced during our conflict also. Those lights are necessary. And one of the things that I think India has produced and every part of India has produced is the idea of freedom. What is the idea of freedom? Idea of freedom, those are students of political science must be knowing there's a positive freedom, there's a negative freedom. That is not important. What is freedom that we have produced? What is the idea of freedom that Kashmir has produced? I have gone through and some literature produced in Kashmir in various phases by the Sufis, by the Rishis, by the saints staying in this region. And now I have a friend, Irfan, who is working on these ideas in 
in Kashmir. We are trying to locate the intellectual history of Kashmir and what are the ideas that are still surviving in people's memory. The idea of the freedom that we produced was that we have to have cordial relation with nature. We protected our nature. We could have made technology. Itna gyan tha hamare paas ki hum bhi bhoat raga technology bana sakte the. Lekin hum ne kya kiya? Apne gyan se nature ko protect karne wala technology banaya. Destroy karne wala technology nahi banaya. Any technology that you produce that would destroy your nature, that was not respected by people. Because the freedom's central idea that we produced was Geo or Ginedo. That was the idea. Geo or Ginedo. Since truth is so complex, we cannot know entire truth. If we cannot know entire truth, then how can we claim that we know everything? And if we can't claim that we know everything, then we have to keep our understanding as tentative. And let us engage with the other person to see whether he is right or I am right. And there is a possibility of dialogue. Gandhi rediscovered this when he started Satyagraha. That was the idea. Satya ke liye agra. That both of us insist on our truth, but don't kill each other on the ground of the fact that I know the truth and you don't know. I think that is the idea that world needs today. World needs to be told that nobody knows the truth. All of <coughs> us are trying to know the truth. From where comes the arrogance that I have all ideas? In the college anthem, I heard a word, ilm. This word really attracts me a lot. What is ilm? What is the difference between ilm and knowledge? Can somebody tell me? I tell you by story. Premchand wrote this story. You can read the details. It's called Mantra. There's a man who... Tell me with my time. Time is over because, you know, I have, I have it speaking Sir, for two hours. Why did you come to Delhi to listen to you? You can take whole days. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the, what is the story? There's an old man. He has a grandson. He was not well. He was taken to a doctor. And doctor says that, well, I can cure him, but this is my time to play tennis. And I am very perfectionist on timetable. I maintain my timetable, so I'm going to play tennis. The young boy died. The old man, man went back home. After some time, the doctor's son was bitten by a snake. Saap ne kaat liya. Now this was the only man, the old man, who knew ki saap ke kaate ki dawa kya hoogi. And he came to know about this. And he kept walking in his home. Deciding that I will not go to this doctor's place because he killed my son, actually, the grandson. And his wife was watching him and said, Tum to jaoge jaro, rok nahi paoge apne aapko. And said, No, no, I have decided not to go today. In the meantime, somebody comes from that area and said, Are, tum hai malum nahi wa, usse saap kaat liya, tum gaye nahi abhi tak. Then his patience broke. He said, No, I'll have to go. He went there. He treated the boy. The boy became all right. And the doctor offered huge amount of money to lay your passage. But I am not here. I will not come again. My past to ill me. Ill me come here. He was a job of your one. I free of cost to scope your car. My passage come on. I will not know that. Knowledge of passage come on. Therefore, they call it the phrase in English is knowledge is power. Phrase in India is ill me is for seva. You cannot sell off. I made a doctor. And he was giving, somebody had a piles. And this man said that I can cure you, I can give you a medicine. So he gave him medicine. And we asked him how much money. He said, no, I can't take money for this medicine. I can take money for all other medicines. But this one medicine which is very effective and there is no treatment in uh, medical science, but I cannot take money. Why? Because my great great grandfather came to know about this medicine in his dream. So it is the ilm of my family. I can't sell it off. If I sell it off, I know I can become very rich, but I can't sell it off. This is the difference between ilm and knowledge. I think this difference we have to tell the to the world. We have to tell the world that knowledge is not a marketable commodity. Knowledge is for serving the humanity, and all knowledge produced by everybody anywhere in the world by all human beings are collective resource of humanity as a whole. 
It is not individual resource. It is not my own resource. It is a resource of the humanity and that should be used for helping the humanity in coming out from the trouble that humanity is facing. This is freedom. The freedom is to serve the people. Freedom is not to dominate the people. Freedom is to serve humanity, not to dominate humanity. I think this is the message that Indian thinkers have produced. And believe me, this is the, this is the idea that common people are holding in their mind. I went to a person, I wanted to speak to him, he was an old man. He asked me, Kaha tak padhe likhe ho? I said, PhD, PhD, kar liya hai. Kya karte ho? Padhata hon. I don't want to talk to you. I said, kyun? I said, yaar, padhe likhe likhe loog bhoot chor hoote hai. I said, kaise? I said, kaise? Chaprasi hai, thoda padha hai, saw rupay leta hai. Block development officer hai, thoda jyada padha hai, aur jyada paisa leta hai. District magistrate, aur jyada paisa leta hai. So, ye to, tumhe padha hai kya gaya hai? What have you been taught? So I don't want to talk to you. This is what has happened to us when we have started treating ourselves as commodity. We have become a commodity in the process. Common people are not. They still have sense of justice. Very strong sense of justice people have. They do not depend on roles to tell them what is sense of justice. And that is the message that freedom, freedom struggle has given to us. I'll give you another example. Sorry, I tell a lot of stories. I hope you like the stories. I was doing a field work in a, in a small village, in a small constituency. There was a lady, middle-aged lady, and her community or caste had very small number. She did not have money. She was an independent candidate. And she defeated somebody who was never defeated in the constituency. And defeated by 25,000 of votes in assembly constituency, which is a big number. So I, I was doing field work. I was asking people, whom will you vote, whom will you vote, and all that. Everybody was saying that we will vote this lady. And I was asking, why? Common perception of political scientists is, that there will be money, there will be more money, there will be more money, But they were saying, is there an injustice? Why? She has not got justice. I said, what is this justice? Why is this justice? He said, injustice is this, that first she gave a ticket to any party, आखिर दिन टिकट छीन लिया उससे तो आपके सामने थाली परोस के कोई दे दे और वो छीन ले तो दुश्मन से भी ऐसा व्यवहार नहीं करना चाहिए दिस इज इनजस्टिस सच अ प्रोफाउंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ जस्टिस व्हाट इज दिस जस्टिस दोज ऑफ यू हैव एनी आइडिया ऑफ महाभारत लेट मी टेल ए स्टोरी फ्रॉम देयर टू कंफर्म एंड देन आई विल टेक यू टू रॉल्स व्हाट इज थ्योरी ऑफ जस्टिस देयर महाभारत होने वाला है युद्ध कल सुबह होने वाला इमेजिन कल सुबह महाभारत जैसा युद्ध होने वाला जिसमें बहुत लोग मारे जाएंगे एंड द किंग इनवाइट्स अ मैन हु इज अ नीति का नीति एंड नियम देर आर टू थिंग्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड रूल्स देर आर टू थिंग्स प्रिंसिपल इज थिंग ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ विच रूल्स आर डिफाइंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी हैव फॉगॉटन प्रिंसिपल्स वी ओनली रिमेंबर रूल्स सो दिस मैन इज इन्वाइटेड एंड द किंग इज आस्किंग द मैन the philosopher, why is Mahabharata happening? Why do you think people are fighting? We know that entire population will be wiped out. He says, because you have not done justice. The king said, what? How have I not done justice? What is justice? And he says very simple. He says, something that you do not want for yourself, do not do it to others. As simple niti, that is justice. That is what those of you who have read Rawls a little bit, you will know Rawls says that there's a veil of ignorance and you don't see where you will be born. Then you think about justice. That's how you can arrive on justice. So this culture already has a sense of justice. In the freedom struggle, there were our leaders at smaller levels whom Gramsci calls organic intellectuals. Located in the villages, schoolmasters played very important role. What role did they play? They just invoked the idea of freedom, the idea of justice. Small poets sung by people, and that is the idea of justice that was spread.
I think that is where we have to pinpoint that these are the forgotten heroes whom we have to recollect, those who constituted the common sense of our people during the freedom struggle and after that, because they will be able to defend our democracy. Our democracy is in danger, remember that. And I'm saying as a responsible research scholar, why it is in danger? There is an alliance between capital and the state. Perfect alliance. And capital doesn't bother even for relatives. Forget about the democracy. Capital needs only one thing. What is that? Profit. 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 That's it. it. It knows no other language. It can sacrifice own relatives for profit. Watch Hindi films. They will give you a lot of ideas how people are sacrificed in capital. So they will sacrifice every relationship, every human relationship in order to make profit. And this alliance is not only India, global alliance is happening. And to work this alliance, they will keep us divided. So protection of your democracy is in your hands, in our own hands. We have to rethink, we have to reconnect with those organic intellectuals. We have to understand those organic intellectuals and reconstitute our understanding of justice, freedom, equality and everything. I think that is very important thing to do today and that is where India has something to offer to the world. I will just take a few more minutes by giving look at this amazing lady a brilliant lady well educated Aurangzeb spent all possible resources for her education she was playing very important role in administration but then she was arrested for some reason you know Dara Shiko and all something happened and she was arrested she stayed in the prison and wrote 15,000 couplets not translated as yet we are trying to translate some of them to understand her mind she talks of freedom the freedom is deeply rooted in our culture that is what we have to offer to the world the other thing and that gives me a lot of hope the other person I am sure you might not be knowing about it because Indian many of the Indian intellectuals also don't know about him I have discovered it somehow is Bhartri Hari have you heard of his name? Bhartri Hari? No. A philosopher is an amazing person. Was a king. The story goes like this that he was a king and he got disillusioned by all this kingship and everything and left his kingship. Became a sannyasi, became a bhakt of Goraknath. And was able to negotiate between Buddhism, Islam, and Hinduism and wrote three important texts. One of the texts became source for French philosophers, including Derrida, those of you know about him, to talk about structuralism and post-structuralism. Linguistic philosophy of the world. But more important than that, what you will discover very interestingly, Hindus and Muslims in Gorakhpur and neighboring areas, they sing Bhartri Hari even today. There are villages and villages where people take upon themselves to move around and sing Bharti Hari songs and influence people and tell them the story of love. Why human beings should love other human beings. I think that is the notion of freedom that we have got. And that is echoed. And that is the last part of, I will take another 5-7 minutes last part of our discussion I think that is echoed in two great poets from Kashmir one very well known one lesser known very more well known is of course Mahzur Pirzada Gulam Ahmad Mahzur many of you must be knowing him what really I found striking was that Balra Sani made a film on him Unfortunately, the film is not available. I wanted to watch the film. Balrasani came to Kashmir, heard some young people singing some songs, and he asked them, Kis se kaha, kiske likhi kavita hai? Kisne likha ye? 
तो वन पर्सन सेट मुझे मालूम नहीं हम लोग गाते हैं इसको बट अ बेटर एजुकेटेड पर्सन सेट ये मैजूर साहब की कविता है हम लोग उसको गाते हैं देन ही स्टार्टड वर्किंग एन मैजूर एंड मेड अ फिल्म ऑन हिम टिल देन ही वॉज अ हीरो पीपल न्यू हिम बट नॉट सो वेल नो बट ग्रेजुअली आई थिंक ही बिकेम वेरी वेल नोन एंड नॉट द मेन लैंड इंडिया नोज अबाउट हिम मोर आई वॉन्ट देम टू नो अबाउट हिम बट येस लॉट ऑफ पीपल नो अबाउट हिम द अदर पर्सन हु इज लेसर नोन इज इज अब्दुल हमीद आजाद अब्दुल अहमद आजाद अब्दुल अब्दुल अहमद आजाद एंड आई विल नॉट स्पीक टू मच ऑफ हिम आई जस्ट रीड फ्यू लाइन्स एंड विल अट्रैक्ट योर अटेंशन टू सजेस्ट that whatever i was saying how it is reflected in his poetry the poem is long i have noted it down but i will just read few lines for your consideration he is talking to human beings and telling them you were the light of reason you were the light of reason but you chose to be fire oh man you put humanity to dis to dis uh, to to disgrace you were the light of reason but you chose to be a fire oh man you put humanity to disgrace how callous of you oh man and then next stanza says nature has thrown open all its all its treasure to you nature has given everything to you oh man and humanity you had to share them equitably which you have not done what have you done but you sat serpent like on them oh man and you can understand what the whole poetry is about is telling the man what has happened to you reviving something that is within us that's called human essence something that iqbal talks about the khudi iqbal's long poem i'm trying to we are trying to kind of now bring that in the course of social sciences that we must read our poets being a social scientist but they are dealing with emotions and feelings we are not and without emotions and feelings there cannot be any discipline of social science so i think i will close here by suggesting that kashmir is a treasure gold mine for knowledge traditions we must reclaim those knowledge traditions we must reclaim those organic intellectuals who constituted those knowledge traditions we must reclaim those organic intellectuals who constituted those ideas of freedom love justice affection emotion and all those things and that will be jashn e azadi or azadi amrit mahotsav whatever you call this is a amrit that we have to bring out after lot of manthan of our own society thank you very much thanks for inviting me Sir, for this very thought-provoking speaker, and before we begin the proceedings, I request uh, Professor Manindra Nath Thakur Sir and Professor Ravi Ranjan Sir to kindly take the seat on the stage. I request to Professor Hamid Awani, Head Department of History, to kindly take the seat on the dais. Professor Hamid Awani. The Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla. He has also presented papers at national and international seminars in India and abroad. For his academic pursuits, he has visited USA, UK, Hong Kong, and Dubai. and this is ravi professor ravi ranjan sir for us thank you very much sir for coming here and accepting our invitation without wasting much time i request you to come here and begin your presentation professor ravi ranjan sir thank you safi bhai for inviting me to speak before all of you and uh, Taral Government College and uh, Principal Professor Loan. So, in morning session, we have started our debate about whom has been remembered and whom has is not remembered as a hero. And it's very difficult when we are talking about the history of a rich civilizational nation 
which Manindra Ji was talking about in the morning, about the idea of freedom that we have had in greatest knowledge tradition that a country can have or a nation state can have. Then why this happened that uh, some people were got in, marked, uh, in golden letters in the history and others were left out. So <clears throat> when Safi Bhai called me and he said that you have to not only speak on the unsung hero uh, because I am not a person of history but you have to talk about how unsung heroes have contributed in making India a plural India which was a difficult challenge to think of because the only thing that social sciences are missing today is to making itself more plural because so then by nature we are plural but sciences are not becoming plural. This is a major contradiction that we have to face in our day-to-day -day life including the knowledge production system. So <coughs> this is a major ch challenge that whom should be called unsung hero, whom should be called celebrated hero, how idea of heroship itself is being constituted. Uh, first speaker sir uh, said that it is the power or the state power that creates the celebrity or the hero and uh, Maninji has an argument that it is a social process which always creates its own social hero whether they have been documented or they have not been documented but they are the hero. I request keynote speaker Dr. Ashma kindly take the seat on the days. Please sir. So, today morning when the session started with your college song or college tarana, ilm, and Professor Thakur has tried to define the idea of ilm in a wider, wider perspective. So, I was also remembering the same college that me and Dr. Thakur used to share for a long time. I was a student, he was my teacher, then we both of us have worked as a colleague also in that institution. Now he moved to JNU and I am there only. So we also have the similar kind of college tarana, Bulandiyo pe ilm ki barhe chalo, barhe chalo. That is, and it is written by one of our teacher, Bulandiyo ki ilm pe barhe chalo, barhe chalo. The more significant part is the next part. Hai ilm se hi rosni. The light and darkness that used to decide the aspects of history that we have to understand. है इल्म से ही रोशनी है इल्म से ही जिंदगी है इल्म से है इल्म से ही फैज की आदमी है आदमी सो द बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ इल्म इज टू मेकिंग यू मोर ह्यूमन एंड दिस वाई हिस्ट्री ऑलवेज हैज टू प्ले ए ग्रेटर रोल दैट हाउ वी कैन जनरेट दिस आइडिया ऑफ ह्यूमननेस और बींग ह्यूमन सो it is much more than being human what Salman, uh, Salman Khan brand is talking about. We have to talk about being human in some other direction. So first is that, so my entire lecture is organized into two parts. Part one is the problems of historiography that uh, he has also spoken about that Nietzsche and Beatrice Pivak and others. And Professor Thakur has also talked about the idea of how subaltern, subaltern historians have tried to change the entire map of noting heroes and non-heroes or heroes or unsung heroes or celebrated heroes uh, including uh, historiography plus the idea of constituting a hero, how a hero is getting constituted in a social structure, number one. And number two, I will talk about two and three uh, unsung heroes which I have talked about and I feel आप सब में से कोई नहीं जानते होंगे वो रियली अनसंग हीरो है बट ही हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड अ लॉट टू नॉट ओनली फ्रीडम इन स्ट्रगल बट आल्सो टू मेक इंडिया ए प्लूरल इंडिया ए मेक इंडिया ऑफ एवरीबॉडी टू सेलिब्रेट द कंपोजिट कल्चर सो इंटायर योर आइडिया ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन और आइडिया ऑफ हीरोशिप हीरोशिप शुड बी रिवॉल्व अराउंड द कंपोजिट कल्चर व्हिच हैज प्रोड्यूसेस द आइडिया ऑफ हिंदुस्तान आई विल नॉट से ओनली द आइडिया ऑफ इंडिया बट आइडिया ऑफ हिंदुस्तान which is a more <coughs> organic or natural term. So when we are, whenever we are talking about the idea of historiography, who should be the part of history? See, this is, this is the mechanical part of history when we are talking about sources, archive, facts, dates. So these are the mechanical part of history. Being a historian, you are trained to follow all the lines of your uh, training and produce the argument. But 
द मेजर रोल द हिस्ट्री हैज टू डू और हिस्ट्री इज सपोज टू डू इज टू क्रिएट नॉट ओनली टॉक अबाउट द फैक्ट जर्नलिस्ट आर ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट द फैक्ट but the role of historian is more important because fact has to create a perspective and the perspective has to generate a moral argument this is a theoretical understanding on must have when we are talking about the idea of historiography so facts are not plain facts facts are not like mathematics 2 plus 2 is 4 here the 2 plus 2 is infinity or 2 plus 2 may not be 4 more than 4 or less than 4 so first we have to understand in historiography the role of fact is very dynamic fact has to generate a perspective and the perspective the every perspective has its duty in knowledge creation to generate a moral appeal that's why the entire movement sustain movement always sustain on the idea of moral appeal so sometime we think that Gandhi was the biggest person or the larger I mean, you can say the tallest person to generate those kind of moral appeal through his acts through his strategy i am not only treating gandhi as just a philosopher mahatma or, or a saint he was he was a trained political strategist also he knows how to do the politics and how to fight with the colonial power because he was not simply engaging in the moral lecture that um, uh, many many uh, uh, interlocutors have raised this question but since his strategy was equipped with the moral argument and that are, that is the duty of the history to in, in uh, to create those kind of moral argument which had which have some kind of sustainability so gandhi ne kaha non violence is a better idea non violence has its own history and uh, gandhi was trying to conceptualize uh, in his own way so this so where heroes are created and where unsungs are left now the point starts from here sometime the power used to delegitimize the moral appeal kyunki moral appeal always creates some issues with for the powerful person कोई मोरल अपील होगा जो समाज के ऊंचे तबके के लोग हैं उनके लिए कुछ ना कुछ सांस्कृतिक कल्चरल हेरिटेज और कल्चरल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन पैदा करता है सो सम मोरल अपील्स आर लिसन एंड सम मोरल अपील्स आर डिस्कार्डेड दोज मोरल अपील्स आर डिस्कार्डेड ऑल दो देवर द मोरल अपील क्रिएटेड बाई सम पीपुल बिकम द आंसंग हीरो एंड इफ द मोरल अपील हैज ए पावर टू ओवरकम the powerful who is discarding the moral appeal you can win the situation like gandhi earlier the britishers try to discard the moral appeal of gandhi by making fun of him by making fun of his ideas but ultimately he proved himself through his moral appeal when the people have started moving towards gandhi and following gandhi so this was uh, the one thing second thing we should never ever think that history is a uh, inclusive discipline it is highly exclusive discipline because why it becomes not inclusive of everybody because uh, today's present is tomorrow's history you have to understand this relation history is not in abstract you, uh, history is always has to be understand in the present if you are not talking about the present you can't talk about the history so when uh, today when i realize that my caste heroes were not counted in the freedom struggle i realized when i have a sense today when i was discarded by someone on the basis of caste so similarly people like ambedkar and others when they came to know about that they are not going to be the part of the history because we have they have been discarded some day so they are present always so we have to connect the history with the present if we have to uh, uh, understand the unsung hero so this was a part of the historiography how history plays role in creating narratives see narratives are not only created by circumstances individual have to play role as an agent both is a mixing of uh, individual and circumstances so this is the historiography that one has to understand how this project of unsung heroes was taken up and uh, why we decided to talk about unsung hero only after the 75 years of our independence it is a different question because now we have changed the set of players now the change of discarders have been earlier some other party was used to be in power so he was discarding someone including someone now someone else is in power so discarding it but i told you discarding someone is not negating the role in the history 
if they have the power of moral appeal or if they have the power they will be they will be again recounted in the history if the time will come uh, like we are talking about fule and many other uh, social thinkers who were not counted in the mainstream history by uh, the others of course the intervention by subalterns was a major uh, way to writing historiography in india but there is a problem with subaltern historiography he is saying the he raised this question uh, about gatri speak can subaltern speak for themselves or subaltern has decided to re redesign the history in, in 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 a new format like uh, sahid amin one of the members of that subaltern group he uh, written about <coughs> event memory and metaphor so how an event can be converted into a memory or whether memory is actually a memory or a metaphor so then one has to decide about and he is contextualizing the size of uh, uh, context of chori chora in up chori chora you must be knowing about after the khilafat andolan started by mahatma gandhi there was a violence violence activity in chori chora in up and when the uh, policeman 22 policeman and police station was burned out by uh, protesters suddenly gandhi decided to lower down the uh, movement but gandhi uh, many are historians are arguing that he uh, in the name of non violence he just withdraw the movement thinking that movement is going beyond his hand or beyond his control or some some there are many other theories and counter theories but once gandhi being the celebrated historical figure he withdraw the movement non violence was of course one of the major problem but we had really realize that the cost of movement how much cost the indian people have paid for that movement more than 1000 people were inquired 219 people 95 or 96 people were prosecuted for the life 20, 45 have been hanged immediately and so because it was crushed badly why i am discussing this because that was the beauty of to movement to make india plural india we hardly talk about who was the hero of chauri chaura it was not mr gandhi because mr gandhi has bitter the movement who was the hero of chauri chaura he itna bada movement hua na 250 logon ko jeevan ke liye saza mil gayi 45 log se zyada phansi pe chadha diye gaye who was the hero he was nizam ali and it was not only nizam ali usko hum log nahi jaan payenge agar hum चौड़ी चौरा को इस तरीके से नहीं पढ़ेंगे इट वॉज ए गुड इन इंटरवेंशन बाई साहिद अमीन थ्रू इज बुक सो ही वॉज निजाम अली और ये निजाम अली करते क्या थे वॉज ही पोलिटिशियन नो ही वॉज नॉट ए पोलिटिशियन एट ऑल उनको लगा कि खिलाफत मूवमेंट इज ए कम्प्लीट कंपोजिट रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिश रूलर्स दैट्स वाई ही पार्टिसिपेटेड बाई ट्रेनिंग ही वॉज ए रेसलर वो कुश्ती खेलते थे अब आप कहेंगे कोई निजाम अली कुश्ती खेलने वाला आदमी अचानक से स्वाधीनता संग्राम में कैसे कूद गया ना कोई ट्रेनिंग ना कोई पॉलिटिकल ही वाज नॉट ए मेंबर ऑफ कांग्रेस वो कांग्रेस का भी मेंबर नहीं था कांग्रेस का तो जो मेंबर थे वो तो संग हीरो में थे वो तो हीरो थे ही वाज नॉट बिलोंग टू ए पार्टी एंड हु वॉज द सेकेंड पर्सन जो उनका साथ दे रहे थे कोमल अब निजाम अली कोमल See, this is the plurality that Safi Bai was talking about. Then I thought, how plurality was created by these unsung heroes? It was not all, the place is Chauri Chaura. We are talking whenever we are talking Chauri Chaura, we always talk about Gandhi. Gandhi is already celebrated figure. Nobody knows about Nizam Ali. He was hanged. Fasi de gaye unko. And the second person, Komal. वो कौन थे वो एक डकैत थे अब एक रेसलर एक डकैत जिसका पॉलिटिक्स से कोई लेना देना नहीं है एंड दे सडनली डिसाइडेड टू फाइट विद माइटी ब्रिटिश इंपायर वो जानते थे कि हसर क्या होने वाला है ऐसा नहीं कि वो नहीं जानते थे कि हम चौड़ी चौड़ा में पुलिस थाने को आग लगाएंगे तो अंग्रेज हमें कोई बुला के कोई माला पहनाएंगे देट वॉज नॉट द स्टोरी बट दिस वॉज द पावर ऑफ पुलिटी power of composite culture that people decided to we have to keep whether i am a muslim or i am a hindu or komal ji ka background kya hai wo dakat hai unko unko bhi phansi hui but unfortunately he turned into a government approver aap samajh gaye to he was 
transported for the life something happened so i was just telling this story of chori chora that we have to create these kind of unsung heroes connection not only uh, talking about unsung hero taking their contribution they are important but how they have contributed in creating the plural see always remember plurality is the essence of indian civilization you can't talk about you can't create any kind of knowledge minusing the idea of plurality because it will be half the knowledge the fact will be fact but it is not given into perspective so it will lose lose its moral appeal that i have started my uh, talk with that proposition second gandhi ji pe hi hum baat kare jo gandhi ji sabse bade hero hain i am not uh, uh, deteriorating the place of gandhi of course he is we know that gandhi's first satyagraha movement was in champaran bihar aaj bihar ki baat bhi kar rahe the चंपारण मूवमेंट की बात कर रहे थे एवरीबडी नोज दैट वाई गांधी वॉज कॉल इन चंपारण टू फाइट अगेंस्ट द ऑपरेशन ऑफ इंडिगो फार्मिंग एंड इंडिगो फार्मिंग वॉज कम्प्लीटली डोमिनेटेड बाई द ब्रिटिश मैनेजर्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ इंडियन जमींदार्स सो इट वॉज वन ऑफ वन ऑफ द वर्स्ट काइंड ऑफ एग्रीन एक्सप्लाइटेशन इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया दैट पीपल यू एफ सो गांधी वेंट देयर एंड गांधी स्टार्टेड डूइंग पिटिशन फॉर देम Uh, for on the behalf of all the agric agriculture laborers and uh, suddenly gandhi uh, decided to stay back in champaran for 10 10 or 15 days and uh, dr rajendra prasad was also accompanying gandhi who would become the first president of india ab yahan pe ek unsung hero kahan se aata hai jisko bilkul hum yaad nahi karte hain and again again this is example of plurality i am talking only unsung heroes who, who are concerned about the idea of plurality because unhone kaha tha ki kaise unsung hero ne how they have tried to make india plural india so british manager who was managing a indigo farm thought that gandhi gandhi is becoming a big nuisance for us because every day he is taking petition pressurizing the us and all the uh, indigo farmer indigo farmers are following gandhi and it is going to become a rebel against the british empire or or, or the britishers so by knowing gandhi's position one of the biggest जमींदार्स और बिगेस्ट इंडिगो फॉर्म मैनेजर कॉल मिस्टर गांधी फॉर ए डिनर ठीक अब गांधी जी को डिनर पे बुलाए सो गांधी जी यूज टू हैव मिल्क आफ्टर द डिनर सो द आइडिया वॉज दैट द कुक ऑफ द मैनेजर वॉज ए मुस्लिम एंड हिज नेम वॉज बत्तक मिया सो द मैनेजर कॉल बत्तक मिया एंड सेट दैट दिस इज बिटवीन यू एंड मी यू विल बी अवॉर्डेड हेवली you are supposed to put some poison in gandhi's milk ab to agar wo kaam hua hota to champaran mein hi pura satyagraha hamara khatam ho gaya hota usi raat so now batuk mia batak mia was employer of that british manager so he has a order from his employer that you have to do this act by the time batak mia came to know about gandhi ji that he is a person he is a saint he is trying to free india free from oppression so he has this understanding so he thought what i should do if i am not giving the milk i will be killed before that so he did the same thing but he went to uh, to gandhi ji with the milk and before giving the milk he said the entire plot so you you are not supposed to drink this milk because this is a poison milk i was forced to put poison in the milk but i have decided that i will tell you the story many people can see who was the witness dr ayan prasad was the witness he was a witness to this entire story and finally batak mia was tortured for 10 days for reasons because he revealed the program so batak mia was uh, tortured for 10 days finally he was killed by the britishers and uh, when rajin prasad became president of first in uh, first president of independent india he traveled to motihari he met uh, son of batak mia and he ordered bihar government to give some amount of land so that batak mia family can survive on those land so still Uh, I think उनका फोर्थ जनरेशन है बत्तक मिया जी का जो दे आर फाइटिंग विद द बिहार गवर्नमेंट टू गेटिंग दैट लैंड और दिस काइंड ऑफ स्टोरी सो दिस इज अ माई सेकेंड अनसंग हीरो हु एक्चुअली वॉज ए हीरो बत्तक मिया वॉज ए हीरो 
बिकॉज ही हु सेव गांधी जी सो एंड वाई बत्तक मिया यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ प्लूरलिटी वाई बत्तक मिया हैज डिसाइडेड टू टेक ऑल द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड गोइंग अगेंस्ट द विशेज ऑफ हिज इम्प्लायर डिसाइडेड टू 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 बी द कल्प्रिट and uh, finally do all these things so the, he was the unsung hero he was not only the unsung hero he makes india a plural india his reflections makes india a plural india now come to the third hero today your principal started talking about khudiram bos i am coming from the same town where khudiram bos has thrown bomb to the british officer cartridges thinking that it was a british collector because british collector they are in muzaffarpur was known for torturing all the bengal, bengal reach muzaffarpur to throw bomb on him and he throws a bomb on him thinking that uh, uh, the collector is traveling into the cartridge but it, someone else was there and he was hanged and when he was hanged he was just 18 so many people appeal, appeal that this is not the right age to hang somebody he was he was uh, he was uh, hanged in a very early age but <coughs> there is a different story of muzaffarpur that i want to share you which again makes the role of unsung hero as a plural india and he is mr magfur azazi bahut log nahi jante unka naam aap google karenge to pata chal jayega so when muslim league politics and congress politics came into conflict and this was about to division of the india, uh, division of india so he was one of the hero because uh, muzaffarpur the name itself shows having a sizable population of muslims so they started making signature campaign <coughs> and that signature campaign was that that territorial separation is not reflection of the composite culture see the dekh chote chote log unko koi माइकल वॉल्जर का नाम उनको वो माइकल वॉल्जर तो उनके बहुत बाद आए होंगे उनको ये कुछ थियरी पता नहीं होगा ही वॉज अ कॉमन मैन ऑफ मुजफ्फरपुर इट डिसाइडेड ठीक है कि हम लोग सो so, उन्होंने जितने भी मुजफ्फरपुर के मुस्लिम थे और कुछ तो इलीट मुस्लिम थे जो पटना में मुजफ्फरपुर में कुछ राजेंद्र प्रसाद के सहयोगी थे ऑल ऑल फ्रॉम द कांग्रेस और सम अदर पार्टीज एंड ही स्टार्टेड ए सिग्नेचर कैंपेन दैट वी शूड resist the territorial separation because this is not reflection of the composite culture which i am talking about the plural india that we are talking about and despite having a large number of muslim population when uh, during the partition we know about the story of rights and blood bath uh, this town hasn't uh, seen any kind of not only muzaffarpur muzaffarpur patna samastipur all adjoining districts because of this campaign because everybody was knowing that we are, we don't have to uh, follow the territorial separation of uh, uh, based on it may be religion or based on, but it is not reflecting the hindustan we are living in the values we are living in because they have also hosted uh, mr gandhi 20 30 years back because gandhi was 1917 mein bihar gaye the aur ye 46 47 ki story hai so the 30 years of composite culture that batuk me has established the 30 years of composite culture that batuk me has established in uh, motihari the adjacent town of muzaffarpur was flowing in muzaffarpur through people like makfur ajaz similarly people like safi daudi he is another person there is a market in muzaffarpur called safi daudi market so he was also one of the person who was propagating this campaign and he went with this proposal to the congress meeting in patna saying that we should we should uh, being a muslim we should oppose this territorial concept of territorial separation because territorial separation is not fulfilling our cultural aspirations so see the cultural aspirations are much much or more important to construct the idea of nation and what happened see nation states of course are the serious mistakes of history we know that but if within the nation space uh, within the nation state space when we are talking about the harmonious cohabitants harmonious existence of each and every one then you can only think the only way is to talk about the the composite culture so my uh, uh, argument through this lecture is we have to do something we have to actually we wanted to सेलिब्रेट अनसंग हीरो जिनको हम जानते नहीं है तो प्लीज उनको याद कीजिए जिन्होंने जिनके लाइफ का यह मूल था पीपुल लाइक नजीर अली ही वॉज ए रेस्लर उनको कोई पता नहीं था पॉलिटिक्स से लाइक बटुक मिया ही वॉज ए कुक ही डजेंट हैव डू एनीथिंग विद पॉलिटिक्स आप सोचिए कि कोई कुक क्यों पढ़ने जाएगा इस झमेले में भाई क्या करना है नहीं करना है 
एक रेसलर क्यों पढ़ने जाएगा आज़ादी के लड़ाई में और क्यों ये बातें होंगी लेकिन भी नहीं मोहम्मद गांधी जी लेकिन अब ये ये हिस्टोरियंस जो है ये लोग छूटे हुए लोग हैं दो वी आर नॉट कवर्ड इन द लेसन्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री लाइक पीपल लाइक बटुक मियाँ बतक मियाँ एंड पीपल लाइक नाजीर अली पीपल लाइक गुफर एजाजी पीपल लाइक सफ़ी दाऊदी सो वी हैव टू not only that's why i said we if we have to actually remember our those unsung hero we have to remember those for the values for which they have lived their life it is not the person who is important always remember history never uh, never remembers person jo person jo history persons ke naam se chalta hai na uska time bahut jaldi aa jata hai jo history ideas ke dam pe chalta hai na uska lamba time hota hai because ideas cross the generations person to hum bhul jayenge बहुत आप हम सब बल्ब जलाते हैं हमको थोड़ी ना पता कि थॉमस अल्व एडिसन जी ने किया लेकिन बल्ब जो है जब हम बल्ब के बारे में सोचते हैं तो हमें थॉमस अल्व एडिसन का याद आता है हवाई जहाज के बारे में सोचते हैं तो हमें राइट ब्रदर्स के बारे में याद आता है सो द आइडियाज आर क्रॉसिंग जनरेशन टू जनरेशन एंड द आइडियाज ऑफ डेमोक्रेटिक वैल्यूज वी हैव टू सर्वाइव द कम्पोजिट कल्चर इन दिस हिंदुस्तान एंड देर आर द पीपल लाइक बतक मिया नाजिर अली एंड मेनी अदर्स बेगम में आप सुबह में नाम लेते जो बंगाल की हैं हजरत मैदानी सीज फ्रॉम बंगाल एंड अब जैसे इन्होंने कमला चट्टोपाध्याय की बात की पीपल लाइक कमला चट्टोपाध्याय वो रिस्पॉन्सिबल नॉट ओनली डायरेक्टली फाइटिंग विद द ब्रिटिशर्स बट सी वाज ट्राइंग टू सेव द आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट जिसके लिए आपका कश्मीर भी जाना जाता है हर मेजर कंट्रीब्यूशन वॉज इन द फील्ड ऑफ सेविंग आर्ट्स एंड क्राफ्ट अगेंस्ट द ग्रोइंग इकोनॉमी ऑफ ब्रिटिश इंपेरिज्म सो एक वैल्यू था इट वॉज नॉट ओनली द आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट द वैल्यू दैट वी कैन प्रोड्यूस इन द टर्म्स ऑफ इकोनॉमी द परमानेंट वैल्यू द आर्ट जिसको हम आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट बोलते हैं सी वॉज वेरी कंसर्न अबाउट दैट सो वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द वैल्यूज दोज अनसंग हीरोज हैज लिफ्ट इन द सोसाइटी एज देयर मार्क गांधी और गांधी जी को इसलिए हम याद नहीं करते कि उनका नाम महात्मा गांधी था या मोहनदास करमचंद गांधी हम इसलिए याद करते हैं कि नॉन वायलेंस इज ए पॉलिसी हुई हुई रिक्वायर्ड बाय ऑल जनरेशन ऑफ द ह्यूमन बीइंग सो दिस वी हैव टू दैट्स व्हाई आई सेड दैट हिस्टोग्राफी हैज टू चेंज एंड द हिस्टोग्राफी हैज टू करेक्टेड बाई पोलिटिकल साइंटिस्ट बाई इनकलकेटिंग द आइडिया ऑफ वैल्यूज विथ विथ हुच द पर्सन और द इवेंट सर्वाइव इन अवर मेमोरी चौड़ी चौरा सर्वाइव नॉट ओनली बिकॉज गांधी जी विद ड्रॉ एंड इट वॉज ए वायलेंट मूवमेंट चौड़ी चौरा ऑल्सो सर्वाइव बिकॉज इट वॉज ए कंपोजिट कल्चर ए स्ट्रेंथ सोन टूवर्ड्स द ब्रिटिशर्स बाय पीपल लाइक कोमल एंड अली सो दिस दिस इज दिस द सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट आई आई वॉन्टेड टू आर्ग्यू फॉर इन द फेवर ऑफ अनसंग हीरो and this was a story of champaran batak mia and chodi chora a story of uh, <coughs> nazar ali and uh, komal and uh, similarly there are many uh, uh, people we are talking about tribal movements like mopla or uh, uh, birsa munda or women's movement similarly we are hardly talking about the student movement in pre independent india this was also one of the area that uh, unsung heroes category as a matter of thing it has to be it has to be uh, taken into account and uh, the third argument is that do we think that actually heroes are important for our societies do we really think heroes are important for our society so somebody was saying questioning uh, dr thakur that uh, idealism is not going to survive so actually we do, we do want to have a heroes who have talked about these normative ideas or we don't want to have a hero because this is not real or this is not practical so recently one of his student in our university committed suicide from the third floor why values are important i'm just talking about a small story so she committed suicide by jumping from a third floor so like a reaction one of the faculty member of one college said that we should close all the windows at least it will save the suicide so this is the difference between practical approach and the normative approach the realist the realist will try to close all the windows despite knowing into the causal factors leading to suicide not but they will go by the symptomic or structural logic ki bhai khirki se jump kiya to khirki band kar do kitna khirki band kar loge aap 
आप टेंडेंसी को रोको ना वाइट पीपल आर कमिटिंग सुसाइड इस पर आप डिबेट करो ना वेदर सी वॉज इग्नोर बाई फैमिली वेदर सी वॉज इग्नोर बाई पीयर वेदर सी वॉज फेसिंग सम फाइनेंशियल इशूज वेदर समथिंग एल्स एज हैपन टू है वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द जेंडर क्वेश्चन इन पब्लिक आप उनको सुनने का आप जहमत नहीं उठा रहे हैं आपने क्या फैसला लिया कि हम सारा खिड़की बंद कर देंगे इससे सुसाइड टूट जाएगा प्रैक्टिकलिटी इज द प्रैक्टिकल आंसर दो इज रियलिस्ट थिंकर्स थिंकिंग दैट दे आर गिविंग द प्रैक्टिकल आंसर टू द प्रॉब्लम बेसिकली दे आर डीलिंग विद द सिम्टोमेटिक रिलीफ टू द प्रॉब्लम आपको हेड एक हुआ आप सेरोडम खा लिया खत्म कहानी वी नेवर ट्राई टू नो योर मेटाबोलिज्म का कोई प्रॉब्लम है यार बार बार ऐसे होता है इसलिए प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है सो यू हैव टू नो द मेटाबोलिज्म ऑफ सोसाइटी एंड द मेटाबोलिज्म ऑफ सोसाइटी सेज दैट इट इज ए कंपोजिट कल्चर सोसाइटी बिल्ड इन द हंड्रेड्स ऑफ ईयर एंड यू कैन डिस्ट्रॉय बाई लर्निंग इन टू द सिम्टोमेटिक फैक्टर और गिविंग सोल्यूशन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट सो वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट द आइडियल थिंग सो नाउ वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट वाई डू वी नीड ए हीरो सो द आंसर इज दैट वी नीड ए हीरो नॉट ओनली द हीरो इज वेरी स्मार्ट टॉल That is not the case. The hero is inculcating some moral appeal, some normative value, some ideas about democracy, composite culture, liberty, fraternity, equality. That's why they are hero. So, <clears throat> how the hero sustains, or why the hero sustain? We can answer that. So, this is the last part of my uh, argument. Why hero sustains, or why heroism sustains? So, this is a small story. and i am not talking about all great war heroes war heroes are important they are doing their own job so they are important who are getting lot of medals and recognition by the state but i am talking about the common man hero how the common man hero come come into picture and why they are sustaining the society and themselves the, the heroism the idea of heroism they are sustaining so there is a small story we were sharing uh, at the time of lunch so this is a story of civilization so there was a teacher like me and many students were sitting in the class who enters the class and he said that what is civilization so one student argued that civilization is a place or is a time era where civilized people are living that is called civilization who oh, is civilization to civilized log hi rahenge so then teacher asked who is civilized now starting of the com- constructing the heroing ship how the hero ship get constituted so who is civilized so many since they were the kids kids of 7th or 8th class so they were saying sir jiske paas lambi lambi gaadiyan ho khane ke liye acche ho jinke paas they have the opportunity to go to movie hall to to theater for some amusement so they are the civilized people jisko hum bhi aaj mante hain ki jo civilized people hai jo bade bade gharon mein rehte hain badi badi gaadiyon mein ghumte hain so teacher said no they are not civilized people so then who are civilized people so teacher is again problematizing the thing he said A civilized person is a person who creates permanent beauty. Now the students are more confused. Who is a person who is creating permanent beauty? So now the teacher defines the permanent beauty is a beauty which will be recognized after your life. So बच्चों को और समझ में नहीं आया तो और complex हो गया तो teacher ने example दिया. Beethoven का music, Shakespeare का drama. Means Shakespeare नहीं है. हम में से बहुत सारे लोग Shakespeare को जानते भी नहीं हो जो English literature नहीं होंगे. But if the play of shakespeare is going on we used to go to theater we watch it we used to uh, think through that play and act premchand ki kahaniya they they are the uh, they are the actual sang heroes who created some kind of value so the idea of hero ship constituted not by actually who are leading from the front they have the role they are necessary they might be the necessary condition but not the sufficient condition to create a heroism the common man hero is produced through your day to day life द कॉमन मैन हीरो इज प्रेमचंद की कहानियां तो वी सो समथिंग वी हैव टू क्रिएट इन आवर लाइफ टाइम हुच विल वी रिमेंबर आफ्टर मी माई इनोवेशन माई क्रिएशन माई पोएट्री जैसे अभी मनी सर ने लेक्चर में जो यहाँ के दो कश्मीर के पोएट थे उनके पोएट्री के बारे में कहा जिनको इन्होंने अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन भी किया सो उनके सुनते ही हमको पोएट से ज़्यादा उस पोएट्री का जो कंटेंट है वो हमको अपील करने लगता है कि हाउ ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ओ मैन दिस इज द सिचुएशन यू हैव टू चेंज द सिचुएशन डोंट डू दिस और डोंट सो द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ हीरोसिप इज 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 इट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्रोसेस एंड माई फाइनल आर्ग्यूमेंट इज दैट एवरी सोसाइटी नॉट डेलीबरेटली क्रिएट द हीरोसिप और हीरोसिप इज नॉट क्राफ्टेड जो क्राफ्टेड हीरोसिप है वो ठीक नहीं है वो तो फिर आप आपको ने, आपने सुना होगा लोग पैसे दे के भी अवार्ड पा लेते हैं हीरो बनने के लिए सो द रियल हीरोसिप 
comes from the value generation for the society and that value generation is a continuous process. It's not a process that today is started, tomorrow it will go on. But the essence of this process, what is the essence of this process? The essence of this process is composite culture and democratization of society with which we are living everyday life. I'm not talking about how Congress was, was democratic or how BJP is democratic or tomorrow some else party will be democratic. It is the be the people of India. It is be the people of India who have to have this idea of hero worshiping or which, which must have this idea of how we can constitute a hero for the society, the hero which is going to be remembered in future. So if we talk about the true India and if we, we talk about the really true unsung heroes, they were those people like Nazar Ali, like Batak Mia, and like many others who not only save Gandhi, who not only fight with police for the Chori Chora, but who actually inculcated a value system in the society that we are product of composite culture and we can only go ahead through the process of democratization, through the process of uh, living together, through the process of See, uh, fraternity, I think um, there is a, some similarity between fraternity and bhaichara, but both as a process has a different uh, linguistic structure also. So the kind of bhaichara that has been created through our cultural uh, connotations were important for those unsung heroes. And this was this culture of bhaichara which has created some the, the idea of India we are talking about or which was the role of all unsung hero to keep not only India signing but to keep India a plural India and plurality is our asset I told you. Without that we can't survive. Thank you very much for giving a presence here. Respected dignitaries, especially our August Research Persons, Professor Maninder Nath Thakur, Professor Ravi Ranjan, and keynote speaker Dr. Hashmi Pal Malik, guests from different institutions, colleagues, and my dear students, Assalamu Alaikum and very good afternoon to all of you. I am here to present a detailed report of the seminar titled Forgotten Heroes, Stories of Unsung Heroes, Freedom Fighters, organized by Department of Public Administration, GDC Tral, and sponsored by Indian Council of Social Science Research, New Delhi. Now I will give you a small this uh, excerpt from Prison Notebook, third, written by Subhash Chandra Bose, what he calls about the heroes and quote non-heroes. Those who are considered good boys in society are in fact nothing but eunuchs. Neither in this world nor in any other has any great work been achieved or will any great work be done by these people. These boys somehow or other reduce their burden of sin and they follow the track of the most orthodox people like a herd of sheep. Throughout their most prosaic life, there is no taste of anything new or novel there is no outburst of full-hearted laughter. There is no inspired self-sacrifice. One has to love new things. One has to grow mad for the unknown. One has to express himself in the free mind and under the open sky by breaking through all the barriers of life and by realizing them to the ground. And this was the spirit behind all those freedom fighters, whether they were sung or unsung, who finally their endeavors achieved freedom for India. And today, uh, in the technical session, we had first the Hashim Iqbal Malik Saab, whose keynote address was really wonderful. And he said that why we actually read about the uh, heroes, why we read about or why when why the idea of heroes come in our mind whether sung or unsung and he gave a full-fledged historical perspective and background that what led actually India to this fight for freedom 
and it was a long history of he explained 6000 years history that when people came from different areas of this world and started exploring the opportunities in fertile india the people they were uh, from whether they were afghans whether they were from the persia but india was full of opportunities and agriculture was at it to speak and the main aim of the exploiter is to exploit resources and captivate these resources and then in a finished form sell to those who actually produce them and then this invasion of india by all the people whether they were from the central asia land locked and even alexander came here to only their aim was neither to influence the people their religion their society or anything else but their aim was to loot their read these rich resources then this uh, industrial revolution which actually emerged from europe and america was already alive with them and this industrial revolution finally culminated in coming of britishers into india in the name of business and all of you might be knowing that it was east india company they first embarked on the lands of this uh, india and finally subjugated that and that is a long story and now the people who were invited to business and they looted their rich resources from this place just to take it to this uh, england get it finished there whether it was workforce whether it was this uh, agricultural products or gold and uh, this jewels and all the valuable things paintings they took it to england and many products came in a finished form to india which was a big market for them and their aim was only to make more and more profit and now this what is history and how it is related with that and what will history do to us and we must before reading any particular text or any particular this uh, history book we must first read the historian and then we will come to know what can be the possible biases and what can be the possibilities of understanding the true sense of history and he also vociferated that the unsung hero the difference between sung hero and unsung hero is actually the sung hero is maybe he in his uh, uh, words he said they were actually very close to britishers and a sung hero is born at a right place at right time and have right connections with the establishment and there are thousands and thousands people who lived in countryside and they were the hardcore supporters of freedom movement of india but they were not remembered they were forgotten the day they died they were cremated or buried under this earth and then he uh, went on speaking and he said that 1857 was the first revolt of india and this seminar is actually a rich tribute to those unsung heroes whether their name is having this uh, uh, named here or not whether they are uh, uh, known by the people known by the historians known by the villagers or not but this is actually a uh, tribute to all of them and after that we had the crux of this seminar that is the uh, address of uh, the lecture of professor mahinder nath uh, mahinder nath thakur ji and he uh, actually he began with his uh, lecture that who are the forgotten heroes first we have to uh, simply uh, point them out that who are the uh, forgotten heroes and who history could not document and what were the impediments of historians that they could not this document the contribution of this freedom fighters and then 
the solution he himself he posed the problem himself and at the same time he uh, gave the very beautiful answer to this that we can stir search for these unsung heroes and we can go to village we have this narration there uh, when their very being lives in the narr narrations of these villagers in the form of uh, expression narratives and uh, and other resources which are still present and which come from heart heart to heart these are uh, this uh, uh, transformed from one generation to another generation and he talked about uh, hero of a novel Maman Das and the, he was actually a Gandhian and uh, he was very hardcore fighter and protector of freedom and one night uh, he saw a blood cart coming from uh, in the, some neighboring uh, these uh, areas and he saw that some things some illegal things are smuggled and positioned from one place to another place and finally to his surprise he was this a ghost flavor bastard by that uh, that who were transporting these things they were actually some local politicians and see what can be the position of a sincere guy that who is with all his heart with all his mind he is backing a movement to free to uh, breathe free but uh, under his nose the same politicians who are vociferating these uh, slogans in the public but during the night the same politicians are doing illegal business what can uh, be the position of that, uh, that, that, that boy and then he is being killed what happens to all the sincere people at the end and uh, still he is remembered as a chacharya peer because uh, pa the pages of history will not forget him because he was really a hero he was a hero that is why he became a sung hero and this uh, this uh, this path was very difficult for the people to make him a sung hero then he was a forgotten hero and this is what actually these intellectuals cannot produce they cannot actually preserve such things because they have some other uh, these preoccupations and uh, now this uh, common saying story uh, in Bihar he was 85 years of age and still the age and old age was not an impediment for him that means Jo Jab Jage Tabi Savera and he woke up at the age of 85 and sacrificed for the holy land and this uh, small, small people they took messages to remote areas and why this uh, today we cannot understand that scenario what sir said that today a uh, small news is uh, out and within a jiffy whole world knows about it but we can uh, how can we imagine the days when to pass one message from one village to another village it was a very cumbersome this task but small people of small villages they have done this thing at that moment and even a small messenger he is also an unsung hero and then he quoted an example beautifully through stories and the best part of this lecture was that everything was presented in the form of small stories and this was a collection of short stories I may call it and this Atavai, this Dharma Bibi well, how she sacrificed all her jewelry and see these uh, uh, women have uh, jewelry is very dear to uh, women for and to sacrifice that thing for the cause of nation it is really a, a, a wonderful job she has sold her to pay for uh, pay as a tax of people to of riaya to the authorities and these things must be re recollected and brought in the texts so that the other people can understand the value of these this and meaning of freedom that it has not actually come out of blue and it is the consistent efforts of these people like this term BB or this common saying and all those people who will be mentioned later on. 
and uh, now the, uh, the this uh, this new ideas of innovation this innovation because nowadays humanity seems in this danger and uh, man has made in last 400 years the weapons of mass destruction and the sir very uh, uh, bluntly said that yes, every country is responsible for proliferation of these uh, weapons of mass destruction, destruction. But that has proved that this is not solution. And nowadays, this Ukraine and Russia war has already declared it that these weapons of mass destruction are simply to wipe out the human population from the this planet Earth. But we must at the same time talk about love, affection, emotion, and uh, the, we must even the conflicts there must be some kind of principles and they, during this conflict is the idea of freedom which is to dominate to all the communities irrespective of caste, color, creed, religion. And th that's how that in Kashmir also, Kashmiri Sufis, Saintists, Rishis, Munis, they actually was afraid for the cordial relation with nature. And that is actually the essence of struggle. Geo or Ginedo. This concept Geo or Ginedo must be actually the uh, big slogan of all the human beings because and then sir actually the knowledge which we uh, actually tried knowledge is power and Mukhtar Saab said knowledge is power power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely and that means knowledge corrupts absolutely and because we can say that Elim hi seva hai this knowledge is actually the service and now cutting the uh, long story short I will uh, because uh, time has already, uh, we have less time, and Ravi Ranjanji, his uh, presentation was also marvelous, and how he connected these unsung heroes with the plural society, and he gave examples of Nizam Ali, who was hanged, being a wrestler. He had nothing to do with the, the, the this Azadi or freedom for India, but still, when he got an opportunity, but he did not behave like the eunuch of so much gender boss. He exerted and finally he was hanged. Or the Komal, although he turned to be an approver, but still he is an unsung hero. Or Khudiram Bose, who was also hanged because he threw bomb on the collector, who used to be a very a harsh tyrant. Or Madhur Ajazi, or Mr. Safi Dawoodi, and so many others. Or this uh, Batak Mia, who was a cook, but see at the same time the, at, uh, what kind of decision he might have taken in a spur of the moment that whether I have to secure my employment, whether I have to remain very faithful for the Britishers and his Amidal, or I have to walk and this seat with that tumult he might have gone at that moment when he finally decided to take the side of his nation, take the side of Gandhi because he knew that morality has to win over tyranny and finally he supported him, he alarmed him and he escaped that and what Gandhi we see today and this should have actually, this Gandhi should have vanished in Bihar long before. So heroship is not crafted. It is a real heroship that is value generation from the society and which is the essence of composite culture. That's it. Just amazing. One thing. Thank you very much, Sir Professor Sagamadwani Sahib, for elaborating everything which our source person had actually talked about in their respective presentations. Now before we ask Professor Lela Khalid for the formal vote of thanks, I request Professor Bhaimad Awani to kindly hand over the certificates of appreciation and participation to the source person. Question for most. Honorable Principal, 
Mushtaka Mandal, esteemed resource persons, person, Professor Manindra Nath Thakur, Professor at Center for Political Science, JNU, and another esteemed resource person, Professor Ravi Ranjan from Department of Political Science, Zakarusan Zakarusan Delhi College. He will speak of her today, respected Dr. Hashmi Bal Khan from DTC Kulgam, delegates from various colleges of the valley. Uh, Mr. Shamim Azgar Ali, scholar from JNU, and other faculty members from the host college and my dear students, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. I feel honored to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks in front of such an august gathering. First of all, I thank Almighty Allah for successful and smooth culmination of today's seminar. Now I would like to convey my sense of appreciation for our worthy principal who always extends every possible support and cooperation needed for such uh, programs. Thank you, sir, once again for also delivering the welcome address in which you warmly welcome all your guests from outside the valley as well as inside the valley. My deep sense of gratitude goes to our esteemed resource person, Professor Manindra Nath Thakur, who in his enlightening presentation shared his inspirational stories and that too from unheard and unrecognized writers and poets. So we are highly thankful to you for your intense research on your home in Kashmir. And you also intend, so we are again enlightened that you intend to do more research on our homeland. We also thank you, sir, for instilling our younger generation with a hope for a practical and humanistic revival of concepts like freedom, justice, love, etc. Once again, thanks for advising us to delve deep into the fathoms of knowledge to get ill in the real sense of the word. And once again, I, sir, I don't know, unconsciously, you gave literature students a minute field for research while we can talk about or we can do research upon unheard writers, unheard poets and we can get the implied ideas and then try to recre recreate and do research on them. So once again, thank you. Now it's time to express my special thanks to another resource person, Professor Ravi Ranjan. Thank you, sir, for deliberating upon the theme in a very unique and marvelous style. So as a literature student, I think that we were more in a national seminar on literature because as it's also very well said that it was as if we were only listening to short stories, anecdotes, poems as if we were in literature class. Thank you, sir, once again for creating such an environment. And once again, thank you for deliberating upon the concept of pluralism society, particularly in the Indian context, and we, which we all think that is the need of the day that we need to develop such kind of ideology. And once again, sir, thank you for beautifully connecting. Like Maninda, sir, you very well beautifully connected the history with the elm and that to that elm which will make humans more humanistic and which, which we all agree that this is what we need where we are having, we are losing our values, we are losing our ethics, we are losing our human values. So once again, thank you, sir, and also for gracing the occasion fire by your presence. Thank you, sir. Now my deep sense of appreciation goes to Dr. Hashim Iqbal Khan for delineating the history of our development of Indian civilization and saving through so many, through so many innovations, movements, ideologies, etc. And also, sir, thank you for elaborating upon the aims and objectives of today's one day national seminar as a keynote speaker. And sir, once again, thank you for apprising us of, of the real labor revolt of which we were not aware of that in 1865, it was actually the uh, labor, uh, this revolt of uh, what we call those handicapped artisans. It was actually that. So first, may we always celebrate as a Labor's Day. We observe it as a Labor's Day, but everybody was not apprised of this thing. That actually, this is what we need. Actually, we need to recognize such things. We need to uh, get those people or get those heroes on the forefront who have really contributed. But then, and this is what we feel as an individual we have to contribute and what we have to work upon. This is what I could get out of it. Thank you, sir, once again for your valuable comments upon this theme. And now my uh, thanks are also due to our uh, scholar from uh, JNU, uh, Mr. Asghar Ali, uh, Shamim Asghar Ali, sorry, Asghar Ali. So I think I will call him a historian with a camera 
as the Mandusra also said that he always is taking the photograph. So he is an historian, living historian with a camera, and I hope he has captured each and every still of this program, and it will get an international coverage, and it will be a future guide for all future generations. Thank you, sir, and a warm welcome to this Valley and Tor College as well. And my wholehearted expression of gratitude goes to all the delegates from different colleges of the valley and to all my dear students without whose participation such programs are not possible. And now my big chunk of thanks goes to the head department of public administration, Dr. Mohammed Shafi Bhatt, for organizing today's national seminar. And a special thanks are also due to ICSSR for sponsoring this program and making it such a great event. Once again, thanks to ICSSR. And my special appreciation and thanks to all the committees and departments who were involved in the organization of this seminar, particularly with special mention of uh, debates and seminar committee, Compu department of computer applications, hospitality and protocol committee, technical and infrastructure committee, and all other allied committees who made this program a grand success. And my special thanks also goes to all the faculty members, te non-teaching members, who one way or the other way helped us and assisted us as in this seminar. My special thanks are also due to Professor Isaka Madhwani, Head Department of English Language and Literature, for presenting all inclusive seminar report. And it would be sheer injustice if I won't express my gratitude to Dr. Mukhtar Amidar for wonderfully moderating all the sessions of today's seminar. Thank you, sir, once again. So let me conclude with the hope that today's seminar shall open the very shut windows of our imagination and vision to see life from a very, very pluralistic, humanistic and practical approach. And we shall all try to get the great lessons from history so that the blunders are not committed once again. So once again, thank you all and may God bless us all. Thank you. Organized with heart, not with mind. Thank you very much, sir. With that, we come to the conclusion of the seminars. Thank you very much.